actually, we've already pulled it out to show Gideon some things. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily Garvey and today we're going antiquing. Usually I don't go antiquing just because it tends to be a little bit more expensive, but I'm going to share some tips for how to find better deals at antique malls. And then as well, I get to sit in front of this beautiful gallery wall now. So if you did not see my video last week, it will be linked below and do go check that one out because I used a ton of thrifted items for this one. I'll also explain why my arm is bandaged up in that video. All right, so let's go antiquing. I think this is my dream hutch right here. I love the glass. I love all the lines and how rustic the wood is. It was definitely expensive, but that's just because it's such a unique piece, I think. I also loved this little medicine cabinet. Um, my husband and I are both in the medical field, so I appreciate things like this and just think that this would be so precious as a medicine cabinet in a bathroom. They had some really beautiful frames. I always love when there are sets of frames and these were beautiful. These blue and white teacups were awesome. They were super heavy. I don't know what this brand is, China. If anyone knows more about this, I would love to know. I thought this blue and white set was also really beautiful. I love when the blue is more of a darker blue like this one as opposed to that royal blue that you saw in the, those previous teacups. They really had so many beautiful pieces of furniture and I'm always attracted to pieces that have very straight lines. I think it's important that we determine kind of what shape and what style we like uh, furniture so that when we're antiquing and thrifting, we can kind of sort through all of the, I don't want to call it clutter, but all of the different pieces and determine what we really like best. I thought this little travel set game was just precious and it even had the little tiny drawer with little pieces in it. I loved these real leather bean boots. They, I really don't have a need for these living in Florida, but my parents do live in Minnesota and so I could leave them there and use them there. But they were, I think a size five, which is a little too small for me. All of the items that I'm showing you here were upstairs and as you can see things are not like great prices but these are prices that you would expect at an antique mall but soon we're gonna head downstairs and that's where I'm gonna show you the much better deals this book was really cool it was massive but it had all different types of furniture and explaining the different styles that they were made in this would make a really cool coffee table book and I think it is something that I would reference. All of the items that I've shown recently in these clips here are from the same stall and what I'd like to mention here is that I find that the stalls that are the most packed with items are definitely the most cheap items i would say the ones that are more sparse are where you're gonna have the bigger pieces of furniture and these things are going to be more expensive typically is what i find but honestly at the end of the day each antique mall is going to be definitely different and you do have to just do a little bit of hunting and maybe find that one stall that you keep coming back to over and over again Some of these clips are a little bit wonky and that's because I am carrying Benjamin on my front pack and yeah, I was just nervous of trying to make sure I wasn't going to break anything. This piece in particular, I picked up with one hand and saw the bottom and I thought it said $600. I think it does say $6, but I quickly put that one down. I thought this floral painting was beautiful. I loved the pink and the gold and white colors in that. So now we're down in the basement and there was just so much in this antique mall. It just went on and on and on. They had this giant section of children's books and toys and then just more and more stalls of beautiful vintage and antique finds. Is it Paddington Bear? I think that that's the children's book that this laundry cart reminded me so much of. And I think it would be really sweet if you had room for this cart in a laundry room, even like underneath a countertop. Mm -hmm. 
all of the layers and the angles and the precision of this quilt was pretty spectacular. I really don't know anything about quilts, so if anyone knows what that one was or what it was called, I would love to know in the comments below. some really beautiful glassware down here and just like collector's pieces that I thought were really unique and really special. I've been loving green glassware. I just think that it is a fun pop of color, but also at the same time pretty neutral. I guess it's not a neutral, but it seems like a neutral because it's like plants in my mind. The markdown on this lamp was crazy. It was marked at $100 and then on sale for $25. So I don't know anything about this lamp, but it seems pretty fancy, I guess. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. This basket was massive. I don't think that this video even does it justice, but it could hold so much. I have no idea what you would use that for. Blankets, maybe? I thought these children's mugs were just super sweet, especially this one with the little gold on the sides and it was just so sweet. It said it was hand painted and the bottom said that it was made in England. This was another really interesting quilt. Actually, this one did say it was a coverlet, but you can just tell how much love and care went into these. One day I am going to start my plate collection, but today was not the day. And fun fact, I was born in Washington, D.C. and actually have a lot of family still there. Let me know if you're from D.C. or Virginia. You have a beautiful state. I don't have a brother, but if I did, I think I would relate to this little girl. I thought the etching on this brass bowl was really beautiful and it would look beautiful on top of some stacked books on an open shelf. I'm not sure what these are called, but I think that they are the part of the stairwell at the beginning of the stairs and these were really beautiful. This sink was also awesome. We actually have a few of these puzzles from my father-in-law when he was a child and they are really cool, but they are actually extremely hard, even for me to figure out sometimes. I'm on the hunt for the perfect blue and white lamp. This one was not it. I didn't like how there were two different shades of blue. And then I also wasn't crazy about the kind of crayon shape. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. This Santa just made me so excited for Christmas and just reminds me so much of the cookies that my family makes every year. So I'll save the item that was super big and hard to fit in my suitcase until the end, but let me show you the first thing, which was these wooden spoons. And I have been looking for some wooden spoons for a while now. We just, we didn't even have any to like serve, like any nice looking ones to serve salad and such. So these were $8 and I think it was a really great find. They're in like beautiful, perfect condition. These are definitely not an antique, but they're pretty. So of course my toddler found a dinosaur book and this one's really nice, like it is a good quality. We've been using it to just create different dinosaurs and then really just search for the ones that he knows are correct because he is the dinosaur expert. <laughs> this one was $8.99. Originally it was from World Market for $15. So not like the greatest deal or anything, but his abuela actually bought this one for him. So this was a special treat for him. And the thing that I am most excited about in which my husband didn't think I was gonna be able to fit into the suitcase was but I love it so much. So when I saw it, I immediately just loved the blue and white. I thought that this detail here and here was just different. Like usually you don't see that on copper teapots. So y'all know I'm a bit of a cheapskate. I almost walked away from this even though I loved it so much because it was 
$10, which I know is not that much, but it was actually marked at 15 and it was on sale for 10. So I don't actually use a teapot because we have like an electric kettle, but I really like having this on the stove just as like a decor element and add a little bit of color. Next week, I will show you guys where I style these items in my kitchen. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on that one. And also, I will be doing an honest review of the renter-friendly products that we used in our kitchen, which were appeal and splash, appeal and splash, which were appeal and stick backsplash and contact paper for our countertops. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that one because there will be some DIY fixes in that one as well. So the PT clinic where I work is cleaning out the back closets and everything and they were gonna get rid of this book so I snatched it up. It is Grant's Atlas of Anatomy and it is from 1978 is the copyright. And I think it is just so cool. These pictures are beautiful. Um, just like you can tell that they're old and everything but anatomy is something that it doesn't change. So this one um, I will keep for reference. I have mentioned before that I, I know it's kind of an unpopular opinion, but I don't like having a ton of books around our house unless like they're really useful. So this one has actually, we've already pulled it out to show Gideon some things. He tells us he's already a doctor. So I think that this one will serve us for many years to come. And I think that the spine is really pretty as well. So that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll stick around by hitting that subscribe button down below and click the little bell so that you're notified when I upload new content. All right, guys, I will see you all next time. Bye, friends.